Now, not a great night's sleep for the old lady Juventus after their Champions League defeat uh, against Atletico Madrid. The ramifications rumbling on. Andrea Pirlo, of course, uh, five years of Juventus midfielder. If you want to go and win the Champions League, you can't play like that without a brain, without personality, without any desire to play. It seemed to me that Atleti wanted to win. Juve wanted to play around. Tough talk from Mr Pirlo. Paolo, uh, what did you make of it? Yeah, I, I sort of uh, agree with the, the frustration, certainly they felt. It was a really disappointing performance from Juventus. Uh, I, I thought that Atletico had much more purpose to them, had much more, uh, I don't know, idea of how they wanted to play about them. It seemed like Juventus had one idea and one idea only, which was to control possession, which they did. But I think, as we've learned many times over in, in football, and certainly European football over the last few years, controlling possession doesn't mean controlling the game. And Atletico controlled the the pitch much more than they did the ball and, and that was what they needed to win. Were you surprised though, Paolo, by the way this game went? Did you see any signs of this coming ahead of time? Uh, look, Juventus haven't played great uh, for, for large parts of this season and I think there's been this sort of tendency to allow uh, Maximiliano Allegri that because often his teams don't start seasons well and he tends to sort of find his solution, find his tactical verve at this time of year because he's always changing. He's always someone who adapts and, and works out what's, what's happening best for his players. And there's just been something off about this Juventus team for a little while and it's ridiculous it feels to say that when they're top of the league, when they've only drawn three games, haven't lost any in Serie A, but they haven't looked impressive for, for really any part of this season so far despite always winning. And I think there's always been that, that slight concern, that slight concern that if they came up against a team better than what they faced in the group stage, better than what they faced domestically, that they were going to be found out a little bit and that's what happened. Stevie, uh, you haven't had a chance to weigh in on this. Where was your surprise level uh, marker? Was it was it was it pretty uh, high? Was it ten? Yeah, I mean, you know what you're talking about there. It reminds me of an old uh, coach of mine, Joe Fagan, and the yeah. second half in particular. He used to always say, if you start quickly, you can then slow down. Mm. When you start so slowly, and the opposition are obviously way ahead of you, it's very difficult against a proper team to turn that around, and they couldn't turn that around. Mm. But the biggest thing that stuck out, which I don't think we thought would be a possibility is that they defended awfully. Mm. Had they lost four or five goals, mm. we couldn't have complained. Mm. I mean, some of the chances that Atleti missed, you've got Griezmann hitting the bar, uh, you know, Costa putting it wide incredibly, mm. uh, and then they lose two goals from set pieces. You know, if ever there was a team that you would put your money on to at right. least, at the very least, defend properly, it would be UV. And they didn't do that, and they've yeah. paid the price. And there were signs, weren't there? They considered three to Kievo just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and, and so the concern is not only what you have in your centre-back pairing with Chiellini and Bonucci. Bonucci, by the way, who looked like he was carrying a piano when he was chasing Diego <laughs> Costa. Uh, and Diego Costa missed that opportunity that, that certainly could have made the game a little bit more comfortable for Atletico Madrid. Surprisingly more comfortable. You, you expect games with Juventus and Atletico Madrid to be physical, to be tactical, to be defending out of the midfield, a whole lot of fouls and a whole lot of physicality in the midfield. Well, there was a lot of physicality from Atletico Madrid, but out of the midfield, and that's what the, the point that I'm getting to, is that for as much possession as Juventus had, one, they didn't threaten to go forward, and two, when Atletico Madrid went to press them, when Atletico Madrid made that decision, you know what? We can beat this team. They're vulnerable today. They got after that midfield, and that whole passing stopped they lost possession of the ball, and there was nobody, nobody from Juventus who would make a tackle. Mm. Nobody making a tackle at challenge in the middle third, and very little of challenging in the defensive third. Yeah. Isn't it ironic, right? And a team that goes out and spends $100 million on a player mm. to make the difference to win them this title... Yeah. Well, don't defend. And, and so I was going to come on to Mr Ronaldo because... Defensive problems were one thing, but the attack is not exactly clicking. Cristiano Ronaldo, you look at what he's done in this, in this competition. One goal and two assists and six appearances compared to, you know, 24, 19 and 10. He has as many red cards as he does have goals. Uh, this was his reaction in the, in the mix zone yesterday. So it's shades of Mr. Mourinho, wasn't it? Saying, hey, I got five, you got zero. He did the same thing during the game. <laughs> He did the same thing during the game. And see, this is, this is where I have an issue. Cristiano Ronaldo is a tremendous talent. It's a generational talent. And his productivity is without question. But this, this, yeah. unnecessary. 
Not only is it unnecessary, but it shows a degree of lacking all sorts of class and respect and appreciation. Mm. And he hasn't won these five titles by himself. Right. When you put your hands up there and you say, yeah, five, I got five titles, my Atletico Madrid has zero, you're saying, yeah, I have five titles. Never mind the teams that helped me out. Never mind the late goals by Sergio Ramos. Never mind the things that have been accomplished in the past by all, some of my teammates that have allowed me have allowed me to be on the stage that I am now. So as talented as he is, you cannot go and do this. And, oh, by the way, he did it in the middle of the game, and for as talented as he is, and does this in the middle of the game, and then when there's a moment to defend, for him to be big, for him to show his abs in a way that is actually useful <laughs> for the team, he turns his back away, and Diego Godin deflects the ball off of him and into yeah. the net. That's yeah, unacceptable. Like Worrying, Stevie, from your perspective? Uh, it's complete and utter classless. Mm. You know, when things are going well and everybody's patting you on the back, you know what, you, you take those plaudits. But when things go wrong and you turn around and you do that, then you're just going to alienate yourself. And certainly if I'm a Juve fan, I don't want to see him doing that. He hasn't won, he hasn't won anything with Juventus. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he's kind of rubbing it in their face as well. Yeah. Uh, Paolo, let's bring you in on, on Ronaldo. How much of a disaster would this be in Turin if... Uh, if if they failed, I mean, they brought him here to win the Champions League, didn't they? It wasn't to win Serie A, they brought him to win the Champions League. If they failed to do that and crash out at this stage, how much of a disaster is that? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's big, certainly. I think you could look even at um, the, the comments and, and indeed the, the tweet put out by the manager, Massimiliano Allegri, after this game. He basically tweeted, look, there's 20 days to save the season. And it, it was as blunt as that. And, and I think that uh, at least there's that honesty about it. I think Juventus came into this season being really nakedly ambitious for the first time because of Ronaldo. Because Ronaldo was there, they said, look, we're trying to win the Champions League. They didn't say, as we've heard in past years, we're trying to get to the quarterfinals and see what happens. They said, we're trying to win it. Um, now they're very much on the verge of not even making the quarterfinals and no one's hiding from that. They're saying, look, this tie isn't over. We can still turn this around. There's still the ambition to do that. But no one is, is, is currently saying, oh, well, look, there's still lots to play for. We're trying to win the league. So at least, if nothing else, there, there's an honesty about it. Um, in terms of how damaging it is, uh, look, commercially, that Juventus have already tied up some good deals off the back of Ronaldo signing. They continue to do so. And that's sort of the first most important step of, of bringing him in. Uh, blunt and unromantic though it is, they bring him in to raise their state their stature as a club to raise their commercial income uh, they're working towards that I can't imagine it does anything but bad for those deals going forward for future deals if the team is not reaching the last stage of the Champions League which is part of the image that you sell you sign Cristiano Ronaldo because you're going out there to win the Europe uh, win the European Cup to win the Champions League without that it, it certainly loses some of its luster but a lot of those deals are already either set up or on the verge of being set up and I don't think in the immediate sense at least it's going to cost them financially uh, in that regard, of course, you do lose some straight-up prize money and, and TV revenue just from being out of the Champions League. At 2-0 down, though, it is far from over, and the odds makers tend to agree with that assessment, and Juventus only a little more than 3-1 to one to still go for, even though Atletico Madrid obviously 1-5 to five favourite, only, only just more than 3-1 to one for Juventus to get through. And off the back of what Paolo was saying about Allegri's uh, tweet, 20 days, 20 days to get ready for the challenge to live and win all together to the end. Paolo, can they turn this around? Will they turn it around? Hey, look, my, honestly, my gut instinct is no, because this isn't just any team they're up against. They're up against Atletico Madrid. I think you could look at Juventus' recent European history and say there's, there's reason to believe that this is a team that knows how to come back in ties. They did it uh, even last season against Real Madrid. They made this incredible comeback from losing 3-0 at home to very nearly win at the Bernabeu give away a penalty at the end to blow it, but they were very close. You could go back to the game against Bayern Munich a couple of years ago with the same thing. They went uh, away to Munich and very nearly pulled this extraordinary iron out of the fire. Or you could go to the away game against Tottenham where they did pull it off, uh, being 2-0 down uh, in, you know, in London, away from home, and, and finding a way to, to come back and turn that around. So they have some track record. They have some reasons to believe they know how to overturn results. But this is Atletico Madrid. Again, it's a team against whom they really created very, very little... Uh, chances in that first leg. I, I don't see it personally, but I also think that with, again, the outlay on Cristiano Ronaldo, with the stature of Juventus as a club that's been to two Champions League finals in the last four years, of course, you have an obligation and a, a duty to, to try it. How different will that return leg be in Turin in, in 20 days, Stevie? <laughs> Listen, unless there's an outbreak of salmonella or something in the <laughs> Atlantic <laughs> camp. Always possible. If, the, if there was one team left in this, in this Champions League, 
and you said, OK, I want you to give somebody a 2 0 start and you know that they're mm. going to take it, it would be Atletico Madrid. Mm. So, listen, the lightning does sometimes strike twice, but that's about their only chance. Ali, three to one, just more than three to one odds so they can turn this around. <laughs> does the three to one take into account Salmonella or lightning striking <laughs> or all those things? Uh, Atletico Madrid. Yeah. You have they're, they're to like closing. They this, only have to score one, don't they? And it's like, over. This, well, they don't even have to score. Right. No. <laughs> Juventus is the one that has to score. This plays into the hands of Atletico Madrid is at their core, what's in their blood, what's in their mantra, what Diego Simeone wants out of this team. Come on now. Right. Atletico Madrid.